This episode is brought to you by Bumble. Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. Looking at you from across the hall. It's, oh my god! Like so, we didn't take a break from airing, but I think this is definitely the first. Time, is this the first time we've talked since like right after Christmas? Yeah, we recorded that literally December twenty sixth. Release it the same day, and that is the last time we've recorded until now. <sighs> that's wild. That's we, definitely the longest break. That's we've longest taken. in a while, man. We need it. We needed a. We needed a Christmas cool down. We needed to remember why we liked Christmas yeah. as much as we did. Not that like I was ready for Christmas to be over, but we had been... We back cataloged we, a lot of new been, stuff. We had been riding that Christmas train for a while. But I'll tell you what. I dug that. I actually liked that we were just like knocking out these new releases as they were happening. And it gave us a I nice agree. little runway to like take a break yeah. in january to like, yeah to and like, i think you'll notice like we're happier as yeah. well because a lot of the the episodes where we reach like this time of year we're like uh, yeah you forced me to watch this and yeah. i might have liked it if <laughs> if it wasn't this time yeah of year. no for sure and i also think that uh you know we're, we're we're tying it in right so it's valentine's day heck yeah man Let's talk about love actually <sighs> one of the most romantic of the christmas films I love Love Actually. You saw it for the first time last year? Yeah. And and after everybody had been saying, you you should watch this. It's really good. And um, it's the 20-year anniversary. It's like there's a whole lot yeah. of like worlds colliding on this And one. I'm also a sucker for these movies. Like, you're a sucker for the Hallmark movie. Uh, I would say more than anything, I'm a sucker for a teen, okay. like a teen yeah, Christmas movie. Yeah, I get behind that. Then shortly after that... I wouldn't say the Hallmark movies. I do specify the Netflix originals because I think the Netflix originals, for the most part, excluding the one that we did an episode on, oh, it's is, so unfortunate, is usually <laughs> so much more bombastically weird. Yeah, like it's like time traveling nights and shit. Like that's, I I could eat that shit for breakfast. Yeah. Give me give me weird royalty drama in the world of the Netflix Christmas cinematic universe, and I'm all in. But so so you're a sucker for those. Yeah. You're you're like I the ensemble fucking, cast. Yeah. I love this movie. And even though like I did not see it until last year, I just I I, I like Valentine's Day. That is just love actually yeah. in February. So I I, I do New think Year's that, Day, New Year's Eve, which is just love actually on New, New Year's, Year's Eve. Eve. <laughs> I, I think that and this is not a hot take. Love actually is the best. Oh of those. yeah, but, like easy. But even then, <laughs> <laughs> even then, there are some issues. There's a lot of issues. There's a man. lot of issues. I I will say one of my top issues. Yeah. We don't need all these fucking stories. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely like moments that I, as I was rewatching it recently. I'm like, oh, I forgot that was even fucking happening. Yeah. Like the the I'll be honest, man, for Hugh Grant getting top billing, like I feel like we disappear from that plot line for a decent minute. Um, I'm pretty sure the British kid going to America is missing for an hour <laughs> after he gets <laughs> That's to America. That's such a weird part too. Yeah. That's the thing is like the way we're gonna have to tackle this, we're gonna have to go story. You have like, to go story, <laughs> like story by story. Honestly. The the way people talk about this movie, 
And yeah. keep in mind, these are two people who like this movie. Yeah, I, I, I think this movie is fantastic. It's... People talk about this movie like it is the most incredible interweaving yeah. of stories, and it is the most minute, unimportant <laughs> yeah. weaving of all these stories it's so, together. Like, well, let's jump to the very end. Dude, we're not spoiling. There's, there, there's That's, nothing to really watch, spoil. Yeah, watch here. Love Actually or don't watch Love Actually. Um, I don't know what to tell you. but Like, jumping to the end, where were they all coming back from on the <laughs> on the airplane I am. like that little girl comes back the guy comes back hugh grant the prime minister where are they they're all at the same exact all at the same airport. terminal there's also it's just like little like i said it's little stupid stuff like the mr bean pops up in the airport for was no he real- supposed to be god I guess he was supposed to be at least an angel. Yeah. Maybe. Because like he pops up originally to thwart Alan Rickman's plan. Yeah. Attempt to thwart Alan Rickman's plan. And then he pops up at the end. And, and I think for no reason. Just it. to distract. Like, just to distract. So that kid can run onto the thing, which is another whole problem. Which is another whole problem. We'll but to. then also, because some of these people, they all kind of bleed together. When Hugh Grant is going to confess his love to the girl... Isn't her neighbor the girl that Alan Rickman almost bought? Yeah, the bra- like it's like it's like little stuff but like th- that. Was no, like, he did buy it. Well, he did buy, it, but he you know what I mean. Like, it, yeah, it's like little stuff like that where it's like that's not really like tying these stories. Yeah, like tying these stories together. I know we're horror movie boys, but like trick or treat, trick or treat does a really yes. good job of like, Agreed. like it's more establishing that all of these stories are happening at the exact yeah. same like. Like, Trick or Treat, theoretically, is, like, maybe 30 minutes of movie yep. told from, like, four different lenses. Yep. This is just like, hey, isn't it kind of crazy that this girl <laughs> who's... All, a, these all know each other? Yeah, these people all live in the same town. It's like, well, that's not that crazy. Like, <laughs> Alan Rickman's wife is just turns out to be Hugh Grant's sister at the end. Like, Yeah. <laughs> it's just wet. It's so weird. It's it, so weird, but... but I love it. I, I love I, it, too. I really did. But this do, is... I really do love this movie. There we talk about like with all of this stuff. We talk about with the albums and the music, and the, yeah. there's stuff that are yearly watches. There's stuff that's maybe every other year, and then there's like every once in a while. Yeah, I can't justify this one every year. Really? I think it's too much of a commitment. It's, okay, it's it's fucking long. It's really long, <laughs> and I feel like it's one of those movies. I'm gonna compare it to Arby's, which is a really weird <laughs> comparison. But hear all me right. out. Um, Arby's is like one of those places where like. After like five years of not having Arby's, I'm like, man, I haven't had Arby's in a hot minute. Okay. And then I'll order Arby's and be like, oh. That's why. That's why. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel about with Love Actually, where it's like one of those movies where I'm like, man, I haven't watched Love Actually in a bit. I wonder why. And then I watch, I'm like, God, this is like, it's good, but it's man, is it an endurance It's test? a commitment. <laughs> like, I think it, it it's a really, it's another good movie where you can totally be doing something else you like, can while it's on. One million percent be doing literally anything else so while it's on. We've gotta go story by story. Yeah. And so like let's start from the top. Literally the first character we see is is the the famous singer Billy Mac. Yes. Billy Mac singing uh, what what the hell's the name of that song? It's like Christmas Love All Year Round. It's, it's yeah, it's it's Love Is All Around. Yeah, is the original song, and it's that Christmas he got Is All Around for, and he's re-recording that song as Christmas Is All Around. And I do enjoy his storyline. I as, like his storyline as like absurd. Like I would watch a movie just about his story. Yeah, I loved his attitude. He's the aging rock star who is trying to get back into the spotlight, but at the same time is now like. Fuck it. Like I don't <laughs> I don't care. This yeah, is kind of bullshit. Who, who do I need to impress anymore? Yeah. Exactly. And he was definitely that character and the manager are are just there are two people that I I think out of this entire movie, those are the two I want to hang out with. So why don't we introduce the suggestion that you okay. had given us? Yeah. And we'll, as we go story by story, we'll do it that way. All right. So I texted Matt as we were watching uh, love actually and my original text said this is the sweetest movie about the worst people yep. ever and then it hit me um let's let's turn the christmas christmasiness up a notch the christmas cheer and we're gonna put these characters on the naughty or nice list the naughty or nice list so starting with this one i think that we can both agree the manager easily on the nice list easily on the nice list bill is a little bit harder to decide he where to is. place him 
But I feel like he's definitely someone who went through the Christmas Carol story. Yeah, and, and came out the on the nice list. Out on top. So while we're talking about this, I actually have a couple lines written down. Yeah. Because um, I liked the Billy stuff probably the most. Um, so I love uh, the radio interview he's doing. Oh, my where, God. Where he's so completely, good. like, given up. Yeah. You made a joke in the car, and I won't repeat the <laughs> joke, but I was trying to remember what I had just watched that I had heard a similar joke and it was actually this okay. movie where he he goes, I'm an open book. Ask me anything. Yeah. And he goes, who's the best shag you've ever had? And he goes, Britney Spears. He was just kidding. Just kidding. She's, She's rubbish. rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good. Yeah. Um, and I also really like when he's on like the the TV show and he says, don't buy drugs, kids. Become a Go famous pop star, star and people will give them, them to you, you for yeah. free. Like, oh my God, dude. He's just, how do you not want to hang out with that guy? Yeah. He's no, great. Like, it's the, fantastic. before he went in for that interview, remember the guy that was working the show prior was playing the song and then talking about how fucking awful the song was. That it was the was worst song he's air. ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happens? To Billy Mac is at the end, the song is number one. Like, and he even, promises that if it reaches number one, he'll yeah. perform it naked on Christmas That's Eve. That's true. And he does, in fact, perform it naked. Yeah. And we get to see some of that footage of him gyrating with the guitar. <laughs> we do. As a very young child is watching that yeah. footage. <laughs> There's a lot of young children being exposed to stuff. That, again, is why Billy kind of in the middle. He, yeah. That's even after the redemption. He might still be <sighs> naughty list so, there. But he... He has this beautiful moment with the manager where he, he is he has put this manager through hell yeah. over the like what is it four or six weeks that we're following. We start out six weeks. I six think. weeks out. So through the six weeks of this movie, uh, he's just putting this this poor manager through yeah. hell. But he says to him like, "I remembered that Christmas is the time you're supposed to spend with the people that you love, mm-hmm. and you're the person I love." Yeah, and it is like this really really sweet moment about how like this guy this guy is kind of the way he is because he doesn't have a lot of people that care for him or that he cares for but he realizes that his manager is one of the people who does care yeah although like so one of the lines in this moment is definitely not one that holds up but i felt like it was done out of love and and it definitely made me chuckle is that line of 30 minutes with Elton John and you come back gay after yeah. he tells him he loves him. That's a really 2003 yeah, line for sure. I was sure. like, oh my God. And I, I, are there other moments? I feel like there are definitely other moments. There definitely are. But again, you, like you said, you can be doing other things while this movie's on. And I most certainly <laughs> that's was. That's true. <laughs> oh, that sounds like you were masturbating while this movie was on. He's, It was Billy Naked playing the guitar. Just did oh something to me. Oh my God. Um, all right. So what's the next story? All right. Next up, we've got Colin Firth. Jamie, mm-hmm. um, who is he's leaving for work, and or no, he's going to a wedding. Yes, he's going to a we- oh Jesus that fucking wedding. He's going to a wedding, and um, his girlfriend is quotes around this sick. So he ends up leaving and returning. Some shit goes down. He returns and finds out that his girlfriend is sleeping with his brother. Yes. Um, so he moves out and where is he? Is he, does he go to live in France? I think so. This is, yeah. I'm, I'm like slowly piecing to this one together. This is where he <laughs> falls in love with the girl that doesn't speak yeah, English. Yeah, doesn't speak English. I'm like, that's the thing is there's so many, <laughs> there's so, there's much so happening. many things where I'm like, I remember that setup and I don't remember where it went. And then I'm like, no, he, yeah, yeah. he goes, it's like almost like, I guess before Airbnb, like what, yeah. a, like a, a Airbnb type situation. And it's this not is a hotel, those, it's like a house. This is, this is one of the stories in this movie that I'm like, this would never happen. <laughs> it is, it is the most ridiculous, especially like. There is no fucking way this would ever happen. No, like this is the one that, this might be my least favorite of he, all of the stories. So what happens is he, is, is it a maid or it's a helper? It's it's somebody. Something. That, yeah, yeah. So, um, who doesn't speak English and he hires this person and without knowing anything about her, like basically falls in love with her. And it's, it's really like, yes, it's, it seems sweet, but it's really shallow because it's 
strictly based on what they look like to each other. Um, but throughout the movie, Colin Firth, like he goes to see his family on Christmas, ends up just leaving his stuff. This is another one that we kind of disappear from this story for a, a hot minute and then we come back. But um, he leaves his family um, on Christmas to go find her and he he ends up finding her he's learned the language that she speaks um i can't remember off the top of my head all i know is it do- it's not english nor is it french and goes and asks for her hand in marriage and <laughs> she's like yeah it's she's portuguese she's according portuguese. to wikipedia she's portuguese okay it's the the amount of like the whole family buying into this marriage like yeah. it'd be one thing if it was like i could accept Hey, I've learned your language. I would love to know but more about it you. Well, like yeah. it, <laughs> this dude was fluent in Portuguese by the time he went and proposed. Yeah, it was really weird. It's it just it shouldn't it should not be marriage. No, there's no world. Like maybe hey, I thought you were cute. Let's the go. The dude get, just let's go got divorced close. six weeks ago. Yeah. No. We don't, listen. You broke up. Yeah. Motherfuckers. Six we- That's right. <laughs> it was only six weeks. He's definitely, he needs some therapy. He needs some therapy. He definitely needs he some therapy. He went from a long-term oh girlfriend God. who's cheating on him Holy with her brother shit. to marrying a woman he has not had a single conversation with beyond a marriage yeah. proposal. I'm going to say naughty list, but not his fault. Not his fault. The girl, like sure, victim, nice list. Yes, she's, the girl, definitely. She's very innocent. I feel like he's he he may have been like manipulating the situation a little this bit. Is, <laughs> this is a power play. Like, if you learn somebody else's language, of course I'm going to fall in love with but you. But she also learned his language at the same time. So, yeah. but whatever. whatever. You know, Fuck it's... Fuck them both. Naughty list. There's a lot of... <laughs> this is like a... This is going to be a weird thing to say. This is a movie that people seem totally okay with most of the stories being like, it's okay to cheat sometimes. Yeah. Because we kind of skipped over the Juliet Peter Mark scenario, which Juliet, is Peter Mark. they're oh! the ones who get married. Don't fucking start, dude. This is the one that <laughs> fires me up. This okay? is, but I will say, I know you were like that fucking wedding. I kind of was charmed by the love no, is no, all no, you no, need. No, 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 I'm charmed thing. by the wedding. When I met like that fucking wedding, I met these three characters. Oh yeah, these three characters. It, so it is such a murky, gross story to be telling. God. Um. Like, so tell me which one's Rick Grimes. Um. So I don't know, but Mark is the best man who films it. Okay, Peter so is Mark, the one that gets that's married. Rick Grimes. Yeah. Uh, Mark, um, and Peter's the one that gets married. So Peter is marrying Juliet. This, Juliet, um, played by not Natalie Portman, Kira Knightley. Uh, <laughs> is that her legal name? Yeah, not Natalie Portman, Kira Knightley. Um, I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I one hundred percent thought Natalie Portman was in those fucking pirate movies. <laughs> that's uh, all right. Well, that's that's your that's your cross to bear. But uh, yeah, the you don't think they look similar? I mean, a little bit. But anyway, oh, let's, come on. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, right. they get married. So Peter's Mark, getting married. And side note, I just want to call this out. Yeah. Weird move to have your best man also be the wedding videographer. That yeah. is way too much work to put on a single person at a wedding. But it sounds like he likes that fucking stress, dude, because he basically staged a, uh, what the hell's it called? Like a flash mob? A yeah, he basically staged a flash mob at at his wedding, and and it was it was awesome. It was it was awesome. No, the flash mob's great. The problem that I have is that not only. Is this a very questionable story yeah. of the best man being in love with the woman getting married and yeah. having no shame, just straight up stealing his friend's girl? Yeah. But in the way in which he confesses his love is somehow yeah. the like everyone's go to most romantic, cute moment. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> so the husband is convinced that Mark doesn't like her. And, and but like not not like doesn't like her like her like doesn't like her like yeah. just hates her yeah is not and a fan of her he makes it he makes it uh, apparently he, there's got to be a reason that he thinks that so, well I wonder here's my guess okay my guess is Mark is in love with girl yeah. knows that girl is his best friend's girl yeah so because of that actively tries to stay away from her at any chance that comes up so dude's just like. <laughs> 
man, he must like really fucking so, hate I my mean, girlfriend. Fucking obviously, when you're the videographer, you do nothing but close ups of her face. Yeah, <laughs> which is the creepiest moment of that this is fucking so, movie. Her reaction is the most appropriate <laughs> reaction to watching that video. So, so Kira Knightley's <laughs> someone, character. Someone needs. <laughs> hold on a second. I don't have this skill. Oh I don't think you have this God, skill. God, I don't know. But man. someone who is talented needs to. T- <laughs> Needs to take the Jeffrey Dahmer scene that everyone's been memeing of him with the TV set yeah. and put their wedding video and Mark's face on yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer's body because that True. is what is happening in this fucking Dude, scene. So, so is it Juliet? Is that what you Juliet? Said? Yeah, Juliet goes to to visit Mark to get the wedding video. She wants to see the wedding video, obviously. Um, and he's like stalling, 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 and then plays the wedding video, and it's like. 30 minutes of just close-ups on Juliet's face. And it's so fucking weird and creepy. And then we basically stop dealing with these characters. Until until the last 50 minutes of the movie. The end of the movie where Mark knocks on their door. Okay, and everybody's seen this. But Mark knocks on the door. Fucking (laughs) Juliet opens it. He's holding a sign that says... Don't tell them who this is. Tell them it's carolers. <laughs> Which is how someone and gets kidnapped. She goes, it's just carolers. And he says, tell them to fuck off. And she <laughs> proceeds to stand there for f- fucking 10 minutes. And he doesn't come to check on her. Well, here's the thing. The, ba- the flip side of that <laughs> is if it was you or me. <laughs> our girlfriend or wife is like it's carolers yeah. we'd be like oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> I can't jump carolers out of- <laughs> get out of my way <laughs> oh my god Mark I can't fucking wait <laughs> I'm waiting all year for carolers Mark <laughs> Mark you're the caroler <laughs> I'll what's, sing with you, buddy. What's with the cue cards, dude? Is that is so people new, can sing is along? This a, is this a new song? <laughs> holy shit oh my god but the fucking cue cards man are like this is the most toxic shit i've ever seen in my life <laughs> it's like hey i just wanted to let you know because on christmas you can tell the truth which i guess that makes it okay to cheat <laughs> I, I guess that makes it okay to try to steal your best friend. 364 girl. days out of the year, though, you can't trust the fucking word <laughs> yeah. that comes out of Mark's mouth. But Mark's <laughs> like, this is the time for telling the truth. I've always loved you. And what does Juliet do? She goes outside and kisses him. And I and know. And that's where we leave it. And I know that, like, the whole point is Mark goes, like, that's enough. Like, yeah. that's, and that's all I needed. Bro. If I'm Peter, I'm still not okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> that there, there's like there's scenario one, which is that you start hanging out all the time. Yeah. And Peter's like, what changed? Yeah. <laughs> and you be well, as long as it's not on Christmas, I guess you can lie. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know I still hate this bitch. <laughs> but you either tell the truth hey, and Peter's you doing today, Mark, it's Christmas. I can't talk to you till tomorrow. <laughs> but it's like you either like, I don't even know what's the worst scenario. You tell Peter and have to work through that awkwardness or the rest of his marriage is this giant lie in the corner. Yeah. And aren't they to- they're together at the end? Yeah. Like they, they hug him coming off the damn plane that they flew all together with everyone every was on the same plane in a lot of ways this could have ended like final destination <laughs> it's true. could have been terrible that would have been sick <laughs> they, there's fu- devin saw was on the fucking plane when they get on yeah they're like oh god um or mark like that movie remember me with robert oh, <laughs> oh, shit. it was all at 9 11 oh my god all right that's so wild all right yeah, mark, that one's fucked up mark juliet both naughty list peter I'm putting you on the nice list because I feel bad for you, buddy. I don't know. You told carolers to fuck off. That's, <laughs> that's not exactly great. But yeah, I, I would agree that if there's anyone who gets on the nice list in this story, Listen, it's it's Peter. If we're putting Peter on the naughty list for that, we don't have a nice list for this that's true. movie. Right. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. 
Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. All right, so then we have the story of Harry, Karen, and Mila. And this is the one with Alan Rickman cheating on his wife or attempting to cheat on his wife. Right out the gate, Mila, Harry, naughty list. Yeah. Karen, nice Karen, list. Karen, nice list. The most emo- And the children, yeah. nice list. Oh, they're barely even a factor in this. <laughs> I will say that the one, probably the most effective scene in this it's movie she's listening to the CD. is when she's listening to the yeah. CD and crying, knowing without a doubt yep. that her husband is either actively unfaithful or is at least drifting it. away. Yep. Yeah. And that is like a diff- that is a difficult scene to watch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, it's <is> not great. <laughs> it's not. I don't really want to talk too much about this segment because I feel like it's <laughs> like as much as like the Peter and Janet and Mark one or Juliet one is like fucked up. This one like really I <laughs> I cannot deal with this it's, story. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's very very uncomfortable. Be- <sighs> And it also like I I feel I, like so many of these stories again. This sounds like we hate this movie we and we don't. don't. I I love this movie. So many of these are left unsatisfactorily yeah. unresolved. Like we still don't like at the end we don't. I mean I'm yeah, assuming they could they're be in the going mids- to marriage counseling or yeah. something or they're done. Yeah. Um. This it makes me feel so uncomfortable because this is so real. Like this is real shit. Yeah, like this isn't like, I don't know. I feel like so many movies with an affair make it like this, like, like, and there was an affair happening, and they, yeah. everybody's fucking all the time and stuff like that. Where this is like, he's having this really like uncomfortable, like unfaithful struggle, and we're actively being like. I don't want to hang out with this guy anymore. No, it's... Like, please let me go see her. Yeah. It's already bad enough, your Professor Snape, but now you're pulling <laughs> this bullshit on the side. And Hans Gruber, bro. I'm Hans Gruber. Man, he is bad God. news at Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> you see Alan Rickman at Christmas yeah, time? Well, you, you won't see Alan Rickman that. at Christmas time anymore. <laughs> but you see Alan Rickman at Christmas time, you better fucking run. Oh, yeah, it's a ghost. Bad shit's happening. Oh, yeah, this is, a, it's this is a... a it's, this is a gross. This is a this gross is a really story. gross story. This one's really gross. And I, I again, I hate how real it is in a movie that I feel like is should be more fantastical than this. So not real. I <laughs> will say the one thing that the one thing it does bring me joy. Homeboy loves seeing Mr. Bean. So like you yeah. throw Mr. Bean in anything, even this gross That's ass true. segment. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, look at Bean just doing his thing. Which side note? I have I have decided. Merry Christmas, Mister Bean will be one of the November December picks oh, yeah, in uh, 2023. Oh, yeah. And also, before we get off this story, like justice for Karen, Emma Thompson is a doll. Yep, love her. She's fantastic. It's it's great. All right, can we speed through the uh, uh, British guy going to America? <laughs> I mean, it's just a very unrealistic story. <laughs> the fact that he lands in America. And immediately gets into a four way to the soundtrack <laughs> yeah. of the callings go wherever you will go, <laughs> and then comes home with Shannon Elizabeth and yeah. her sister is just like it's too much. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's naughty list. Naughty list all the way. <laughs> this movie also They reward him for being gross. They like- reward him for being gross. This movie also like <laughs> I remember putting it on. I'm like, this is a PG-13 movie, right? Oh no, no, this is there no, no, is no, no, so no, no, no. much nudity There's in this. There's a movie, lot of nudity, in which this. ironically, the the story with the most nudity, probably my favorite. Oh, agreed. Yeah, agreed. But we'll get there. We gotta we'll get. get we gotta yeah. zoom past this, and we still. I think we should do Dave. Based on the wiki page, we have to do Dave and Natalie. Next. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. my second favorite one. Dave and Natalie's sweet. It's just a very sweet story. So you got David played by Hugh Grant. He's the new prime minister. Um, and he's doing like prime minister duties and stuff and like, and it leads to like a really cool, 
cameo by uh, Billy Bob Thornton as Killing the president. It. He's great. Oh, yeah, he's fantastic. You hate him, and yeah. he does a really good job at making you hate him. And again, this year, we might talk a little bit more about Billy Bob Thornton at Christmas it, time that we kind of sort of hate him, but but love him <laughs> at the same true. time. <laughs> it's been years since I've seen that movie, it so I'm looking up, forward but to yeah, that. But yeah, it's, it's something. <laughs> yeah, so like, so you got da- David? Yeah, David. David. Um, the Prime Minister who one of the help is Natalie, who they have like a really cute meet cute. It's a really awkward meeting. And then it, this one's the very much, this is the Hallmark movie. This is the Hallmark movie. This is the one moment. where I think we can agree both go on the nice list. Oh, like, yeah. Like in a big way. Yeah. The only thing that rubs me a little bit the wrong is way. Is it when they're at the school and it totally looks like they're about to disappear and go fuck backstage? I mean, that too. <laughs> I, that I, made me uncomfortable. I genuinely don't know how old Natalie is supposed to be, but it feels like it is a creepy That's age gap true. throughout. Like I'm like, she did say she just broke up with her boyfriend. She yeah. moved back in with her parents, like all that. But it, it's like there's something where I'm like, oh, this feels, this feels almost Monica Lewinsky esque in nature. But I don't think that that's the intention. I don't think they're trying to Ooh, invoke that. Yeah. But but there is this element where I'm like. Hugh Grant's definitely like late forties, leaning into fifties oh, in yeah, this, definitely. and she looks like she's like twenty five, twenty six. And like, look, as long as they are like a reasonable gap past eighteen, like I think age I'm means 40, a yeah. lot less. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're forty five and you want to date a twenty five year old, like that is your prerogative. There is nothing uncouth. It's about also that. not represented in a way that he's like pressuring her. No, not anything. at all. It's it would be different if he was like forty five and she's like, yeah. "This is my internship from college." I'd be yeah. like, "Oh no!" <laughs> That's but, a different movie. But but yeah, <laughs> but it's that was the only thing that like I was like, "Oh god, they, yeah." Could they have cast someone that's just like a yeah. little bit older? Like, but it's very sweet. It and is a sweet th- story. That's the that had my favorite ending. That ends up with that him uh, going house to house looking for where she actually lives, and he happens upon her entire family. And all the that led to like one of my favorite moments where she like the mother's like, we need to get to this concert. And he's like, uh, Natalie's like, it's not a big deal. And she's like, the kids will be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And then that like that's the big climactic moment is this big concert, this big concert, which that leads we- us perfectly into the Daniel, Sam, Joanna Carroll story, um, which is that Daniel uh who is Karen's close friend, mm-hmm. who is played by Liam Neeson. Oh, my God. Uh, I take that back. I think this is my favorite story. So I've got a... F- uh, we'll get into this. i got a kind of a okay. fun story. Okay. Um, so this is... Uh, his wife, Joanna, dies. Yes. And he's trying to take care of his stepson, who's Sam. Yeah. And Sam is in love with his American classmate, Carol. Yeah. First of all, do you know who Carol is? She looked familiar. So that is Olivia Olson, who is the voice of Marcella on Adventure Time. Oh my God. And I know, I don't know her personally, but I'm friends with her dad, who voices the character of her dad. On Adventure Time. Wow. <laughs> this was like her big first. She she was like a singer that they hired specifically yeah. for this role. And she's a pretty good actress, as, yeah. we, as we can see. But yeah, every time I watch this, I'm like, I am friends with this, <laughs> this child's father. That's <laughs> like, adorable. It's so <laughs> random. But yes, this is a really sweet one. Um, I do love... You know them home. Same with Let It Snow, the first thing we've ever talked about. Yeah. I love... I could do without the airport scene. I love everyone we'll coming. We'll get there. We're not. We're but, not. I'm not. But doing I mean, that like, if yet. this ended at the concert, I'd be like, yeah. fucking perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's such a perfect final end. All the stories are tied together, and then we just spend. We spend like 20 minutes between Sam chasing down Carol, and yeah. even then, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. If that's what we're gonna end it with, is him yeah. chasing down the classmate. But then again, it's like one week after Christmas, and then it's yeah, like this, and then she's back. It's like, like I what don't, the fuck I, is this? But but I liked this storyline a lot because I was really worried with her, his mom dying. We were gonna get a I don't like when I originally watched this. I was really worried we were gonna get a I don't like my stepfather situation, and then they were gonna have to form a bond. But no, they have a pretty good uh, father son relationship right off the bat, and um, I 
I love this story of I'm trying. I'm just trying to win the girl, man. I'm just trying to win the girl, and and it's adorable because it's it's I don't know. It's it's puppy love, and so this is what I want to talk about is when they go to the airport. Yeah, <laughs> because so what happens is this girl Carol is that was her Carol. name. Carol is the singer for the big concert that uh, Sam ends up Mariah Carey's yeah. All I Want for Christmas is You. And it's an, um, it's an insane rendition With that every faculty teacher- teachers did not do because that was amazing. And the school band, which like if anybody that knows me listening, our school band ain't that good. So but like, no, but like no I, Every way. faculty member's up there playing instruments too. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's insane. But I can buy into the, f- I can buy into the fantasy of yeah. it. Yeah. It's harder to buy into the fantasy with the fucking dour ass like Helen Rickman shit yeah. happening around oh, the corner. Yeah, that's but true. it takes away from the fantastical nature yeah. of the rest of the movie. So but. Car- so Carol um is flying out that night. Yep. And Liam Sam's like, oh, I've lost her and, and Liam Neeson's like, No, we can't give up. You need to tell her how you feel. And they see her drive off in the car and <laughs> Liam Neeson's like, Let's fucking go to the airport. <laughs> and, and I'm like, these kids are 10 years old. <laughs> this is the strangest shit ever. This is weird, right? I, You know what? I would say yes, but I'm giving it a pass. Okay. And I'm giving it a pass because I think more than... I don't think this is like, this is the love of your life and you've got it. I think that it's like, this kid needs a fucking win. His mom just died. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this You're kid, not wrong. Yeah, like this That's kid's it. Christmas is fucking rough. <laughs> yeah. He needs this. Uh, I need to make this yeah. happen. All right. So let's just say that as soon as those two enter the airport running, both of them are getting shot. Tackled. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, are we again? I'd hate to it's be 2003, dude. But, but we're, this is post 9-11. I know, but this is England. I don't know. Did they crack down as hard as we did over here? I don't here? know, dude, but I would assume that they cracked down British listeners, let me know. Do you have to yeah. check into the airport three hours early to get through all the T- TSA crap? Like, it was wild, <laughs> yeah. man. Like, they, they were running through everyone. And you know what happens in the end after they capture Sam? They just bring him back to Liam Neeson, and yeah. they're all allowed to leave. Hey, he's... Again, I think that that might be. I that just, bet. That's I bet Britain. that there's like some British listeners that are like, yeah, you know, you cause a little bit of havoc, but they're not gonna like lock you up forever. Yeah. Where if you pull that shit in America, you're dead. You're dead. Oh, they'll <laughs> shoot you. <laughs> like you are not making it out of that airport no. <laughs> at all. Never. Um, so we're hitting a really weird moment where I'm looking at this wiki page, and I'm reading three names that I swear to God. I have not heard okay. this entire movie. Yeah. Sarah, Carl, and Michael. And I'm going to read this paragraph, and okay. you tell me if this strikes any memories in oh, you. Oh, I remember right off, right after you saying the name. Tell names. me what it... Because I must have... Is this like a super short nope. segment? Because I, I don't it, remember it any of this. throughout. Uh, Sarah's in love. Sarah is an employee of Alan Rickman's. Yes. And she loves... Carl, who also works there. Okay. But she has a emotionally disturbed brother. Yes. Michael. Okay. Do you remember this? None of it. Really? <laughs> okay. So all throughout it, she keeps getting calls and she answers it like, hey, babe, I'll be home soon and stuff like that. And it's hinting at like maybe she has somebody at home. Yeah. It's hinting at the third example of infidelity in this movie. Yeah. Um, But... Finally, Alan Rickman's like, you need to go for it. You need to just tell him you love him. So I guess props to Alan Rickman for that one. So she talks to Carl, goes out with Carl. They end up going back to her place, and they're making out, and they're getting naked and stuff like that. And then Michael calls okay. and, and like is freaking out. And Sarah's like, do you really not remember any of this? So I think <laughs> I remember one thing. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Is this the story... Because I remember, there's so much happening. Is this a story where they get to the flat and she like goes around the corner and does like a little celebratory dance yes, in the stairwell? Yes. Okay, I'm remembering who these people are. Okay, now. so I don't know why this whole story. I watched this yesterday. <laughs> this whole subplot <laughs> has evaporated out of my brain, but I yeah. think it's because it's such like a huh, like it's kind also of, a very downer. Like yeah. <laughs> also, I I. I think it goes without saying all of the people involved in the previous segment. Nice Nice list. list. (laughs) (laughs) Which one was that? The Liam Neeson. That was Liam Neeson. I think this one kind of nice list. Nice list too. There's nothing like, I would say like car. I think it's mostly nice list from here actually. But Carl's like, bro, I was going to get laid, but I get, you got to go take care of your brother. And they're, they kind of make up at the end. 
Um, it is really upsetting seeing like the brother. Yeah. Uh, like uh, because he swings on her at one point and she's like, no, and stuff like that. But you find out that their mom had just died like recently and mm-hmm. that's who was taking care of the brother. So she feels responsible. This is another segment that's very real. It's too real. Uh, this movie can't figure out the tone that it wants yeah. to juggle. And I think that that's probably another one of the reasons why I don't think I can watch yeah. it every single year. Is it's that. like. I want I want the Christmas you know me I can't even do the Christmas horror after like mid November yeah. because I I want the holly jolly and nothing else I get that don't hit me with this sad bullshit I, um, I feel that all right and then describe the last one the very last segment which right is up, weird because I I I still th- we did this in a weird order this is the order is according to Wiki but this is definitely not the to me I don't center think this piece is at like all the center story no at not all. at all um but I think out the gate both on nice list yeah. lovely people uh i just love this it's yeah. john and judy there's their professional stand-ins and they're on a movie set where they have to simulate a bunch of sex scenes yep. and they are like so charmingly comfortable when they're naked around each other yep. but as soon as they have to put back on their clothes and not be in that scene they are super awkward yep. but it's another fucking segment where people are engaged yeah they get married at the end or they get engaged what the fuck why are why is everyone getting engaged a month into knowing (laughs) each other because it's christmas is in the air man and also uh wikipedia also gives me this little tidbit because there's a separate page that just says rufus and says rufus is the jewelry salesman who mysteriously okay was he god so it says in the director and cast commentary, it was revealed that rufus was originally supposed to be a christmas angel but was dropped from the final script (laughs) <laughs> that's weird <laughs> to drop that like that's the choice that you made like we're gonna have rufus just weirdly show up twice twice I, and not address it also i i just want to show you this weird ass fucking map on wikipedia showing how all the stories interlock like, it is the most confusing family tree i've ever looked at but i um, love actually cinematic universe. yeah for sure but yeah it's look perfect christmas Fun valentine's fact, day man. combo yeah. it's but yeah it's i i mean i get why people love it i don't know how i feel about because this is one of those movies that's starting to pop up in the same dialogue as like you know what my favorite christmas movie is love actually and it's like i don't know man this is too long and too dour to be like my favorite christmas movie i do like <laughs> whenever Whenever I think about Love Actually, I'm like, yeah, I want to really watch that movie. Like, yeah. God, that movie just makes me feel good. And then I watch it, and I'm like, damn, these are some awful people. They're really like, shitty they're some people. Really shitty people. There's some great people, but I think the people that are awful make like make up for the nice people. I'll also say, yeah, I love the soundtrack for Love Actually. Great soundtrack. Uh, and and not just like from a Christmas standpoint, like I was singing it jokingly, but the closing song is God Only Knows, yeah. which is such a perfect Beach Boys. It's mm-hmm. arguably could be in contention for the best song by the Beach yeah. Boys. And then my, I don't know if you know this about me. Yeah. One of my absolute favorite albums, like top 10 favorite albums, when I was a senior in high school, this CD never left my car is the first Nora Jones album come okay, away with I can me. See that, yeah. So even though it's during the the most disgusting of stories where yeah. uh Alan Rickman slow dancing with the young girl at his office. So what like what the fuck, man? But it's, you know your his wife is, is there. there. But it's, it's set like that to, scene in the Halloween reboot where yeah. he's just dancing with the other girl. Oh my god. But it's set to Nora Jones's Turn Me On, which is just a fucking gorgeous sexy yeah. song so uh it almost kind of t- taints the song for me that it's in this context i can get behind that but uh but yeah i mean you know what dylan i actually love you you know there is love actually all around us whoa, oh whoa, oh, oh, oh now we won't stop till the big ball drops on you You're listening to the Geekscape Network.